And welcome back. A vitamin once hailed as a low-cost way to prevent prostate cancer, now, at least in one study, shown to increase the risk of developing the disease. A study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association shows men who took vitamin E each day were 17% more likely to develop prostate cancer than those who didn't. And this news comes on the heels of another surprising recommendation. Late last week, a federal panel said routine blood testing can do more harm then good. So should men avoid vitamin E and screenings for prostate cancer? Well, tonight's guest says, not so fast. I'm joined by Dr. Deepak Kapoor, president of Advanced Urology Centers of New York, the largest urology group practice in the entire nation. Now, this study comes out, you're saying not so fast, why? Well, the study regarding vitamin E is actually fairly interesting. It's an extension of a trial that was done earlier called the SELECT study, mm -hmm. which studied the effects of vitamin E and selenium on the development of prostate cancer. Right. People had hailed these drugs because of antioxidant properties as cancer pre uh, preventive. But the SELECT study showed that there was not any cancer prevention benefit. Yeah, in my understanding, about 35,000 people were involved in this study. They Very large trial. Numerous years they followed it, and then they stopped the study because they said, uh, as you said, there weren't the benefits for prostate cancer. But then something that's interesting happened is the group that was taking vitamin E. Precisely. The, uh, the lead author went ahead and continued to follow that, uh, the patients on the select study for an extended period of time and came up with the uh, surprising finding that not only did those patients not have a decreased incidence of vitamin E, mm -hmm. uh, excuse me, of prostate cancer, they actually had an increased incidence of prostate cancer. And this brings into bear the problem, since we don't really know what causes prostate cancer, right. it's so difficult for us to go ahead and say that this, that, or anything. This is kind of post hoc ergo propter hoc, where you say just because it exactly. follows it doesn't mean it's caused by it. Right? Exactly, and that's the, the one thing about, uh, about this study. There is a correlation between vitamin E and prostate cancer, but correlation doesn't imply causation. And what this basically tells us is that more study on the causes of prostate cancer are necessary. Now. Um, the, the other interesting part of this study is they were taking mega doses of vitamin E. They weren't just taking much higher than the, uh, the 20 RDA. 20 times the amount of the That's average That's correct. But the thing about this particular vitamin, it's a fat soluble, what we call lipid soluble vitamin. There are four of them, A, D, E, and K. These vitamins aren't readily excreted. They're stored in the body for extended period of time. So the effect of taking large doses of these four t uh, particular agents can be very uh, very complex because we don't really know the metabolism of these drugs to full degree. Now, is there something else to be taken into consideration? The fact that these they were taking vitamin E supplements and not necessarily the food that vitamin E that contains vitamin E, like nuts and the vegetable oils. And well, like that. you couldn't possibly consume enough food to go ahead, and you'd they'd be wheeling you around in a in, in a wheelbarrow, you right. know, uh, yeah, uh, to go, to go ahead and get those kind of doses of vitamin E. So. If you're taking physiological doses of vitamin E in what you eat, you don't have anything to worry about. If it's individuals that are going ahead and using these extraordinarily high doses that I think that we have to take a step back from that un uh, until we understand better what causes prostate cancer. Okay, let's move on to one more thing. Last week, the U.S. Preventative Task Force came out and said that they recommend men not get the PSA screenings for prostate cancer because that might do more harm than good. Um, you say, again, that's the wrong recommendation. Why? Absolutely. The study is extremely troubling on a number of different regards. First of all, the science that they used was not good science. There were uh, conflicting studies. None of them were of high quality. There was significant contamination of the data in terms of the control arm. So from a scientific standpoint, the study wasn't valid. But more importantly, think about what they did. What they did was they said that because of risks of treatment, nobody should find out if they have prostate cancer. So that's but, kind of a bait and switch. But part of their argument was is that these tests, these PSA screening tests, sometimes have false positives, and then people that are actually healthy go through these sometimes potentially dangerous screenings. I mean, isn't there some The screening of itself, Stone, that's the important point. The screening isn't dangerous. The screening itself was just a blood test and a simple physical exam. Nobody's saying the screening is dangerous. Okay. What they're saying is that the, what you do with the screening, if you get a diagnosis or treatment, that you may not need treatment. Mm -hmm. But there's three things that we all need to remember. Number one, the death rate from prostate cancer in the last 20 years has gone down by 38%. Number two, the, in, 19, in the pre-PSA era, 53% of men were dead at 10 years after PSA. 97% of men are alive at 10 years. 
Number three, in 1985, only one out of three men that we diagnosed were, was curable at the time of presentation. Now, that's over 90%. Prostate cancer is a killer. Second leading cause of, prostate, of cancer death in the United States, one man still dies less than every 30 minutes. So we can't afford to not take this seriously. Right, and it's the most common cancer in men. Most common non-skin cancer, absolutely. All right, so, um, so what do we take from these? Well, studies. I think that what we take, what we're asking patients to do, because this is the same panel that two years ago recommended that women not be taught how to do breast self-examinations. Right, the mammogram study was also controversial. And not only controversial, there was such a huge hue and cry from the public that the panel stepped back from the recommendation. What we're recommending is that this is just a tool. It's a piece of information that you can use with your doctor to go ahead and make the most informed decision for yourself. Mm -hmm. It's not an obligation to be treated. And so what we're suggesting is that men continue to go ahead and uh, receive screening in an educated fashion, use that information appropriately, and write to their congressmen and representatives to urge them to overturn these recommendations just as we did with the mammogram recommendations two years ago. All right, good information. I appreciate uh, Dr. Deepak Kapoor. appreciate you coming on and educating us on, on these issues. Don't worry, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for helping right. bring attention to it. Dr. Deepak Kapoor, president of Advanced Urology Centers of New York, largest urology practice in the United States. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Well, your umbrella is going to get a workout over the next couple of days, but will the rain clear for the weekend? The all-important question. Bill Corbell returns with your seven-day hyperlocal forecast.